Next up, Playboy Buddy Rose. Uh, many people kind of see him as a comedy wrestler just from those blowaway segments. Literally, the blowaway being a product, a some kind of fat loss product, which was a thing. But whatever. But he was an, a very accomplished wrestler. People just didn't get to see it a lot. But if you were in the, if if you watched the AWA or you watched a lot of the promotions at that time, you did see how good he was at the time. For NWA, uh, for big time wrestling in Hawaii, their heavyweight title and the NWA Hawaii tagging titles with Big John Studd. For the AWA, their world tag title with Doug Summers, which uh, at that time. I believe was managed by uh, Sensational Sherry at the time, I think. The Cauliflower Alley Club, the other category, because again, they didn't have anywhere to put them, unfortunately. For NWA All-Star Rest All Star Wrestling, the Canadian Heavyweight, the Canadian Tag Titles twice uh, with Chris Colt and Rip Oliver, and the NWA Pacific Coast Heavyweight Title, of the Vancouver version. For NWA San Francisco, the NWA United States Heavyweight Title, their version twice. The NWA World Tag Title, their version, with Ed Wiskulski, who was better known as Colonel De Beers. For the Oregon Professional Wrestling Federation, their heavyweight title and their tag title once with Buddy Wayne. For the Pacific Coast Championship Wrestling, their tag title with Buddy Wayne. For Pacific, for Pacific North, Northwest Wrestling, better known as the Portland Territory, the NWA Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Title Eight times, which I believe was a record at the time, may still be. I'm not sure. For the NWA Pacific, the NWA Pacific Northwest Tag Title, twi uh, tw twelve times, which definitely has to be a record. Twice with Jesse Ventura, four times with Colonel the Beers, twice with Rip Oliver, once with Stan the Man Stasiak, once with Brian Adidas, once with Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning, and once with Avalanche, which. Was PN News for those WCW fans. Good lord. For PW, for the Pearls and Illustrated, they're uh, ranked 265 in the PWI 592. For the Ring Around the Northwest Newsletter, which is probably a, a lesser known newsletter at the time, their Tag, tag Team of the Year award in 1978, 81, and 94 with, with uh, Colonel De Beers, Rip Oliver, and Buddy Wayne, respectfully. The Wrestler of the Year in 1881. For the Universal Independent Wrestling, their heavyweight title twice, and of course the Hall of Fame for WWE. Um, Buddy Rose, again, a great wrestler. Kind of went, kind of got larger over the years. Not in name, but in stature. Wasn't a good thing, but you know, you know, you got to make things work, and he did. Definitely did. And finally, Jim Barnett, a man for people that would that were that would be more familiar of him as the promoters in some promotions in Australia, promotions, of course, of Georgia Championship Wrestling. But with Barnett, he had a stranglehold on the NWA for a lot of time, honestly. Um. And if you think about it, a lot of the champions were kind of influenced by a vote. Of course, all the promoters voted to see who would be the NWA World Heavyweight title at the time. You, know, you had to have kind of a unanimous opinion by all the territories involved if you want the champion to be someone that can go across the territories. And especially if one of them, you know, eventually one of them was going to be a home promotion you know, it was a different time in wrestling where, you know, people actually gave a shit about who the champion would be. And, you know, lobbied and politicked to have the champion in their area at least more than once a year. Because, of course, the champion would go around, but that big title match would be once a year in one promotion. And, of course, uh, Barnett had, you know, ties with pretty much every promotion in the business. Especially for the old WCW in Australia. 
And, and if you think about it, without Barnett sell, selling his share of Georgia Championship Wrestling, we wouldn't have had Black Saturday, we wouldn't have had the WWF taking over, and we wouldn't have the WWF, quite frankly, uh, having that TBS time slot, and having the funds, basically to make WrestleMania because those that ad, that ad revenue and all of that especially in in that money at the time would be millions and billions of dollars by now but at that time ad revenue for that time slot and the money that came with that time slot for TBS basically and of course selling it later that year uh you know basically funded WrestleMania pretty much a little more, a little less as far as dollar signs are concerned, but a lot of it did happen. But, uh, you know, Barnett was kind of all over. Was for the WWF, was for WCW. Uh, but Barnett was all over the place, and honestly, you know, because, uh, you know, did have a lot of interest in this company, and in many companies... And he even became a consultant for WWE in 2002 after, of course, WCW went under and then at that time, uh, you know, was bought at that time. And if you think about it, without Barnett's influence in Georgia, Tommy Rich wouldn't be the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, let alone for the week he held it. But, uh, you know, you know, I'm not saying Rich doesn't deserve the title. Of course he did. You know, you had a young faith at the time. You could make money with this kid. Make him the fucking champion. Have that week to try to boost the gates in Georgia at the time. And see what happens. Uh, but, you know, without Barnett, honestly, I feel that Tommy Rich would have never been the world champion at, at that time. Not that he wouldn't have. It's just, you know, kind of circumstance at that point. Because, again, Barnett did have a major influence in the NWA at that time. Especially with his vote having big influence about who would be the champion. But, you know, some people have their opinions on him. But, you know, did what he had to do to get to this bit, make this business what it was. Especially in those days. For their accomplishments over there, uh, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, their class of 96, and of course the Hall of Fame. But, you know... Barnett, again, was a great guy. Some people will have a differing opinion of that. But overall, without Barnett, I don't think the WWE would be where it is now, especially with Black Saturday happening at that time. And with that being said, that is all the legacy inductees. I do want to stress one more time. If you ever go to a Hall of Fame, do not do what that guy did. Do not do what he did. I mean that from the bottom of my heart because these people gave their bodies for us, gave their lives for this business, and they need to be respected. Thank you.